Okay guys, so because I talk a lot, I've had to split this video into two. So if you've not watched part one, then click here or here somewhere. And this is the PhD related Q&A video. Let me get right back into the questions. Somebody asked me today, she was actually gonna start in Oxford for a research internship. And she was like, how will I learn? What will I do in the research internship? When you first go in on your first day, the supervisor is gonna introduce you to other people. And he's usually gonna give you to a PhD student or a postdoc for day-to-day -day supervision. And then he'll go over kind of research questions with you. So this is all based on my experience um, doing summer internship at Cambridge. It was my first ever research project. I had no idea how to re do research. I didn't know how to use a microscope, etc., etc. So he actually said, you know, okay, Christoph's going to teach you this. George is going to teach you that. And what happens in research is basically you have a question. Okay, so we were looking at a receptor in a cell called piezo one and we wanted to see, okay, what does this receptor actually do? From that, we have to pick a very specific question. Where is this receptor even present? And so then you're like, okay, can we test that? How do we test that? Well, one technique is that you can stain the cells and you can take a specific antibody that is specific to this receptor that will go and bind it and then it will glow or it will fluoresce. And then you can look at it under the microscope and under the microscope you get these images and you can see, okay, this is where your receptor is. Now, this was the only question that I was going to answer in eight weeks. So this is one thing, research takes a long, long time, right? So in this project, what did I need to learn? I needed to learn how to thaw stem cells. I needed to learn how to grow them, how to feed them, how to change their media that they were growing in. So these are all things that you're gonna learn and someone will show you. They showed it to me, so they did it with me. You know, that's the one great thing about working in labs is that everybody has had somebody else to train them. So everybody is ready to pass on that knowledge and train you. How do you make the most of a research internship. So my biggest advice or suggestion would be to ask lots of questions. If you don't understand something, just ask. If you don't understand why, why are you doing this research? Why is it even important? Why is it relevant? Could this be of any use? Are people still curious? Why are you doing a PhD? <laughs> why did you become a professor? You know, just ask everyone anything. In lab meetings, just ask a question, don't be ashamed. Um, and this also ties in to my next question that I got was, what if you fear that people are gonna make fun of you for not knowing something? And my answer to that is, first of all, at least in Oxford, which I'm so grateful for that people are like this here, which is that, they understand the limitations of their knowledge. I have seen professors ask questions in seminars that even I knew or an undergrad would know. And I was like, whoa, he didn't know that. However, this professor is not just a professor for no reason. He's a professor because he's a real expert in something, right? So people have a lot of inconsistencies in their knowledge. They might know a lot about something and they might not know that much about everything else. If professors can embrace that they don't know everything and they're not ashamed to ask questions, then why should we, you know? We're just students and we are here to learn. And if in the rare chance somebody does make fun of you, it kind of reflects on them. How can they laugh at you? Like, what is there to laugh about, right? There's nothing shameful. You're doing the best thing, which is learning. And you're courageous enough to learn and to ask. So yeah, shame on them actually for laughing at you. I mean, did they know everything? Did they come out of the womb knowing everything? No, right? They had to learn. So if you don't know something, you want to learn, isn't that great? That makes you amazing. So yeah, rock it. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to say, the reason why it's so important to ask questions is that some sometimes everybody's confused and everybody's scared to ask. But as soon as one person asks a question, then everyone jumps in and kind of like, yeah, yeah, I didn't get it as well actually. Yeah, what is this, you know? And then turns out 
that everybody has benefited from your question and everyone's kind of relieved that at least somebody had the courage to ask. So just ask. Then in terms of imposter syndrome, how did I deal with it? I think it's just about improving self-esteem a little bit and thinking, do you know what? I am good enough to be here. I do deserve to be here. I am just as good as other people. I have worked hard to get to where I am. Therefore, I deserve to be here. So I think maybe it's kind of positive self-talk, improving your self-esteem in general, that I think should help. The other thing is, even if you have imposter syndrome, it's not a problem until it stops you from doing what you want and from pursuing your goals. Don't let the imposter win, let yourself win. Other than that, maybe try um, therapy as well. You can try and get to the root cause of why you're feeling like an imposter. Do you have an underlying like anxiety problem, low self-esteem problem? Could you improve your self-esteem? How can you feel more worthy, etc. So it could be deeper questions. Maybe start using evidences. Fight back with evidence. Wait, if you were an imposter, then how did you get selected on this program if you weren't as good? No, it means you are as good. The selection criteria. You went through exams, you went through interviews, you went through a very stringent selection process and you're here. So why is that? Five people on the panel completely were blinded? No, right? They saw something in you. They saw your potential. They saw how good you were. Therefore, you're here. Okay. Biggest struggle as a student, um, I will answer this in the context of a PhD student. So the biggest struggle A is dealing with failure, uncertainty, not knowing where your project will go, when you'll get done, when you'll get results, when you'll submit, <laughs> just, just the uncertainty. The other thing is keeping things on track. Um, when you have no hard deadlines, so for example, when I was at uni, it was so easy, right? I had coursework deadlines every two weeks. We had um, exams and you just had to get, get through it. You had the deadlines. But in the PhD, we barely have any deadlines. And if your supervisor is super chill like mine was and he doesn't give hard deadlines, then you have to really self-manage and self self progress, I was going to say self-propagate. No, you have to progress by yourself and keep track of yourself and keep a check on yourself and stay consistent and all that stuff, which is really, really difficult, especially with, with me because I'm a chaotic person. But other people might not find that that difficult. Also, managing work-life balance is so um, important during a PhD and it's so difficult. And I made a whole video on five ways that PhD students make themselves miserable. So please check it out. I don't know why none of you watched it because I put so much effort into writing that article and making the video. So please watch that. Last question is, what's been your favorite thing or things to do in Oxford? Well, maybe my favorite thing is exploring colleges, walking into these like majestic colleges and it blows my mind that this is a place with such architectural beauty, like breathtaking buildings, and they're actually being used for education. Like it's not a beautiful museum. It's not a beautiful like art gallery. It's a beautiful place of learning and education. And that I could cry, that is so beautiful to me. There's just something so sacred about beauty just studying in a beautiful place it feels magical it feels it feels like an honor anytime i've had like a frustrating day or something with my experiments or my work and then i just come home and i i see those beautiful buildings it just takes all the stress away i know that people just become used to it and they become kind of immune to it but i think for me it's like every single time i go outside in Oxford, its beauty just surprises you from like different angles or something that you never saw. And then suddenly you like, you're like, I pass by this every day and I never realized how beautiful it was. So I think for me, it's just 
the beauty of Oxford. So yeah, I've been speaking for a long time, but I hope that this was useful. And thank you again. I forgot to say, guys, thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers. Thank you for all your amazing comments, liking my videos, watching my videos, and spending time with me. And I really appreciate it. So thank you so much and stick around for lots more. <laughs> Bye.